Hello, my name is Elizabeth Anderson and I've been on the Works of Art Committee for five, six years and love it. The picture I want to talk about today is called Anne Lace, New Orleans by the New Zealand artist Felix Kelly. Felix Kelly came to England just before the war and when war was declared, he signed up with the RAF. However, he obviously had quite a lot of spare time because in 1943, he held his first exhibition in London at the Lefebvre Gallery. By chance or not, Sir Herbert Reed came to the exhibition and liked his work, like Felix's work so much that he asked him if he'd illustrate a book he was writing called The Green Child, which I think is Sir Herbert's only novel. Anyway, Felix Kelly became a great friend of my grandparents and painted their house in Sussex. And so I knew him when I was growing up and he was the most charming, delightful man too, apart from being what I think is a very good artist. Anyway, here's the picture. So here's my picture, Anne Lace, New Orleans by Felix Kelly. Felix Kelly not only painted oils like this, but he also designed Theat theatrical sets for the Old Vic and for Sadler's Wells. Plus he did murals. He did one for George Howard at Castle Howard and he also did one for Queen's Skating Rink. I remember going skating in the uh, 70s, uh, 60s or 70s, can't remember, and writing to him afterwards saying how much I liked his mural. And he wrote back this charming letter saying how much artists appreciated getting letters such as mine and that he was so pleased I'd taken the trouble to write. Of course, I was absolutely thrilled by this. If you look in the corner of the picture, you can see two rather mysterious figures getting on or perhaps off a tram. And in the right hand corner, there are two bicycles propped up against the building. But there is a slight mystical feeling about this picture which I really love and I think it works extremely well and there's always that quality in many many of his pictures. Thank you. I'm Richard Wendorf, a member of the Works of Art Committee at the Athenaeum, and I've been asked to talk for a few minutes about one item in my collection. I should begin, however, by saying something about what is on the wall behind this particular object. Well, these are three etchings by Piranesi, and for many decades I've been trying to collect uh, decent early impressions. But I'd run out of space uh, after collecting about 45 of them. And so I decided to focus on objects that I could put either on top of a table or a bookcase. And what I'm showing you now, this particular object, is an Italian 19th century Grand Tour uh, collector's item. He stands about two feet tall. Uh, he is a replica in bronze, very heavy bronze, of the Uffizi Fawn. And I first came across one of these at a small antique shop in Cecil Court, not very far from the club. And he is right here. And he's only uh, about a foot high. And they're very much like each other, except the smaller one uh, has um, a little rest, which is uh, the trunk of the tree. And also you can see that in addition to the rest here, there's a nice little object down here that enables you to turn him about and see him from all sides. Now, the original uh, of this figure is naturally at the Uffizi in the Tribuna, and you can see it in this photograph here. I had an opportunity of seeing it just about a year ago, and you can see that he has the support there as well. And there is, not far from the club, at the Royal Academy, um, a true-to-size plaster cast uh, of, the, uh, of the sculpture. 
and it's catalogued, I'm afraid to say, as the dancing fawn. But this is patently not a dancing fawn. Uh, look, for instance, at the hand here, which holds, as does the other one, uh, what we might call symbols, but they were called crotala in the ancient world. And then if you look at his right foot, you can see that he's got something close to what we would call uh, a foot accordion. It was called a comprision at the time. Now, there is in fact such a thing as a dancing fawn. And I'll give you a photograph of that to take a look at. And you can see uh, that the dancing fawn is an older figure. He's bearded. He's taller, he's leaner, uh, his feet uh, are one in front of the other, and he is in fact dancing. So I was able to find this particular uh, Uffizi fawn uh, at the Olympia Antique Show uh, a couple of years ago. And I've also been able to add uh, a few Warwick vases and also a Borghese gladiator who's about the same size as the fawn. And then just last year in Tetbury, I saw in an antique shop uh, something that dwarfs even this uh, lovely model. And I'll show that to you finally here. And so here you have a rather lovely, I think, copy of Mercury. And when I first saw him, I thought that he was probably made of bronze, but as I got up closer, I realized that he's actually marble. And if you go very close, you can see that the patina is actually greenish in color, very close to a serpentine uh, from, from, uh, from Cornwall. But in fact, this is an Italian stone, probably sometime in the 19th century. We've decided to call this Mercury Freddy, but uh, even though he flies, uh, he doesn't yet know how to dance or sing.